Hello, my name is Marmaduke Globe from Orthotic World. And what I'm going to be doing is a series of lectures uh, describing new advancements in orthotics that we may have not had in our uh, orthotic and prosthetic schools. Uh, I'd like to touch on subjects of things that we have maybe advanced, uh, things that we need to think of in the future, and concepts that may enhance our outcomes for people in need of bracing. Today we're going to be talking about lower uh, limb orthotics. There's definitely been a paradigm in advanced lower extremity orthotics that we're still not being taught in school. Uh, there's many new changes that are going on and uh, I'd like to describe about some of them. But one of the first things I want to do is talk about the different terms. So there's lower limb orthotics. That's the name of the profession or the specialty of providing orthoses for lower extremity needs. And orthosis is the name of the device. Orthotics is the name of the profession. Orthoses is plural for an orthosis, so it means more than one. The definition of an orthosis is something that I think we've uh, possibly not got into or delved into enough uh, as we progress through our, our profession. And, and the origin of orthosis is uh, actually New Latin. It's from Greek. It's uh, orthosis means straightening from, and, and it came from the word ortham, uh, O-R-T-H-O-U-N, which means to straighten from orthosis. First uh, known use was in 1958. So we know that orthosis uh, by definition means to, to straighten. And so orthosis is a noun. It's in the medical medicine uh, side. It is the first main um, definition of it is correction of disorders of the limbs of the spine by use of braces or other devices to correct alignment and provide support. So a brace or other such device is an orthosis. Now in one dictionary, the orthosis came between 1955 and 1960, another classification where they said it came in uh, 1958 was the first use or known use of the word orthosis. So ortho, as we know, means to, to straighten. So the primary goals of an orthosis is to straighten. And so we need to straighten structural deficits. And so what is a structural deficit? A structural deficit is any bony segment that is out of alignment. So every, you know, if we take the human foot, there are 26 bones in this human foot and they move in all three dimensions. So when we make a orthotic, you know, an orthosis, what we don't want to do is just take care of what we call the sagittal plane. We need to take care of all three dimensions. So we have the sagittal plane, which is everything that happens in this dimension. We have the frontal or coronal plane, which happens in this dimension, side to side. And then we have the transverse, which is rotary. And so rotary is something that, and, and coronal plane that I think uh, most orthotic de designs that we have or that we're utilizing today, are we're assuming that we are controlling those two other planes. Sagittal plane, we take care of on the drop foot. We also try to protect the knee from buckling uh, to the front, but really very little, like I said, is being done in the coronal and the transverse planes. And, and uh, that's what I'd like to talk about uh, uh, further is that we need to control in all three dimensions. So the other um, definition or part of the primary goals of an orthosis is support body segments. So if we have something that is injured or, or needs support, we need to support that body segment so that it is protected uh, so it could heal. Replace functional deficits is another primary uh, goal of an orthosis. So if we have a drop foot, then our goal is, okay, we need to find a functional replacement for that drop foot by bringing the foot up and supporting it. And or, and or if there's lost propulsion that we need to see, well, okay, is there, that's a functional deficit. So if the, the propulsion is something, if we could replace that, that's a functional need of that individual. This is not a structural deficit. A drop foot is not a structural deficit. It is a functional deficit. The other, which is very, very important as a primary goal of an orthosis is reduce and prevent deformities. 
And this is something that um, I, I feel is being very inadequate in lower extremity orthotics uh, in general. Uh, we are taking care of what we call the swing phase, which is we lift the foot up so that the foot doesn't have to be, the whole limb doesn't have to be lifted as high, and then we could clear the ground. So this would be taking care of a functional deficit, but uh, there's a lot of, when, we, when the foot hits the ground, there's also, there's adverse forces that are going on because there's, they may not have the muscle control to balance and support. And after a while, the ligaments are being stretched, stretched, stretched until we finally have developed deformities. We also have an imbalance of muscles that may draw an arch up and, and be like a, for a pest cavus. So we need to figure out, okay, how do we need to counter that? So th those are things that we need, to, uh, we need to reduce and prevent deformities with an orthosis. So then uh, the other is uh, protection of uh, body segments. It's not only support, we need to protect the segments. So if we have ligaments that are being stretched out, we need to protect those. Ligaments are very critical for body alignment and body support and body balance. And so if a ligament is being stretched out, we're not supporting it. But the other is as the human body malaligns, we are also getting adverse forces within joints and the joint surfaces are being worn unevenly and prematurely and which can create pain centers. So we need to um, you know, pr protect those body segments, tendons, ligaments, joint surfaces, and so forth. So the secondary goal of an orthosis is uh, comfort. Okay, so a person will not wear a device unless we can make that brace tolerable uh, to support that body segment. If it hurts too much or whatever, it's uncomfortable, then there's, uh, they will not wear it. And our job is to support, protect, uh, and all the things that we just mentioned before. So to comfort, our job is, okay, how do we design an orthosis to hold this under full weight bearing? Uh, could be a body segment, but a foot, that we're talking about lower extremity orthotics, but we need to spread out forces over the greatest area of whatever the, the well, whatever we're countering. And so we have to make it where the uh, pressures are within tolerable reasons. So by spreading forces out over a larger area that somebody uh, can eventually learn to tolerate, and all of a sudden they almost don't even feel that pressure anymore if we, if we do our job right. The other is what I have found is when we do a combinative orthotics, that means that we cast in whatever position the foot is when, when the person arrives, this actually adds more force and actually less comfort. Uh, day one, it feels good because it's formed to them, but there's nothing to prevent the limb from further uh, collapse. And then we keep blowing out, like say around the navicular or whatever, and then it becomes uncomfortable and we have to keep heating up heating up and what it does is it allows the deformity to continue. And what I found is when we go actually for correction and get full correction, we have gravity on our side and actually minimizes the pressures within the orthosis. So I find by adding corrective forces in multi dimensions that it actually makes it more comfortable uh, once we get them uh, controlled and aligned. The third goal of an or orthosis, the definition is cosmesis. Uh, sometimes too many people are using the cosmesis as the number one goal. And, and I think that that's a mistake. We need to have a, a system where the orthosis um, is as cosmetic as possible. Um, there are too many people that are focused on the cute shoes, uh, and they always want to wear cute shoes versus how they look or how they appear when they walk into a room. And so they could have cute shoes, but if they're walking all over the place and very major gait deviations, uh, no one's going to be looking at their cute shoes. It's how somebody walks into the room and feels comf comfortable and, and doesn't bring attention to them. The less compensatory patterns brings less attention and actually they float or glow or, or glide right into a room and, and sit down. That brings less attention. And I think that is a lot more cosmetic than than uh, leaving all the other stuff alone and having a, um, you know, a person with uh, major gait deviations uh, that becomes very apparent uh, by everybody. So there is a lot of things like, you know, I mean, the big trend now is putting butterflies or cute stuff on, on, on plastic. 
Um, yes, to a certain degree, this is cosmetic, but it really doesn't meet the need necessarily of the individual to be, be uh, more functional, uh, be able to walk with uh, less energy and so forth. So there, there's different er areas or types of things that we want to consider on as far as um, cosmesis. And the third goal of an orthosis is cosmesis. And after achieving the first two goals, appearance uh, makes us as natural as possible. So how we appear, how we stand, how we walk through how, you know, body uh, posture, uh, how we enable somebody to uh, move more efficiently in a room and actually take away as many gait deviations or eliminate all of them as much as possible is far more cosmetic than actually how, you know, the cute things that we may stick on to an orthosis. Now, orthotic design is actually very important. And actually how we design it, we, you know, the way I do it is I go for all the functional needs, uh, you know, structural deviations first, and then, then the functional deficits. And then the, you need to make it, of course, comfortable, but then the appearance is, okay, what, what on the device do we need and what don't we need? And whatever we don't need with modern materials, like carbon graphite, we can put the materials where we need it, but take it away where we don't need it. And so that's one of the things as far as, uh, you know, I find that with my uh, new advanced uh, orthotic devices, a lot of people feel, wow, I'll wear shorts or dresses with this. And I found this um, years ago with prosthetics is when we had really non-functional de prosthetic devices where we basically had a satch foot and heel. The, the people with wearing prosthetics were very concerned of how it looked. So they, everything had to be shaped perfect in this and that. But once we got into high tech materials, carbon graphite, so we had dynamic response feet. And the more advanced we got, the more high tech we got, then people didn't want them finished. They wanted them actually to, how does, uh, this is neat, this is high tech, and they had no problem showing it off. So then all of a sudden the long pants started disappearing and people started wearing and exposing their prosthetic devices. So I'm finding that the same in orthotics. We're now on a trend that's maybe 20 years behind the prosthetic side on, on that part. But I've been doing this high-tech orthotics for a long, long time, and uh, actually since the 90s. So I've noticed it from that point on. Uh, the rest of the profession, we're now starting to get there, but we're going to see a trend where a lot of people are going to be showing off their uh, lower extremity orthotics. And, and I get a lot of referrals because some of my clients are not afraid to show they actually like the high tech uh, AFOs or KFOs and they're out there walking and showing them off and which brings people conversations and uh, where do you get that and how do I get one of those and so forth so uh, it's a nice trend to to see so the cosmesis comes only after you've solved all the other other issues so there there's uh, whenever somebody comes in and they talk about oh I want this to look good or this and whatever I then will we'll back up and we'll, we'll talk about all the other things that have to happen to make everything look or appear or have how they present themselves in, in public. So that's, uh, I think, a very important thing, but uh, I always try to focus them back to what is really needed or required first to, to make this all, all happen. Now, the cute shoes, to so go back onto the cute shoes, cute shoes are very important, and so, but whatever shoe, cute, or whatever that could fit over a device that is actually functional and structural. Uh, so we take care of the, uh, the functional aspects and the structural aspects first, and then the cuteness uh, of the shoes could come in after. I don't trim away anything that's going to sacrifice the structural functional aspect of the, of the orthosis. Now, I will trim off and nibble off any place that I don't really need, which enables the uh, smaller type of shoes uh, to fit on. Uh, shoes um, is another whole subject, but we need to make sure the shoes for orthotic, uh, uh, orthoses, I should say, for low extremity orthotics, um, you know, they need to be uh, wider and deeper prevents the length from growing on a shoe. Uh, the other part that's very important is the, the waistline of the shoe, and, and, and we'll get into that uh, as well in the recommendations for shoes in the future. So in the foot, we have 26 bones. And those 26 bones will deviate in all three dimensions. So the human, every joint within that foot 
allows that each bone to move and articulate in three dimensions. They're not single plane joints. They actually move in, in, in three dimensions. The three dimensions uh, we talked about before, sagittal, coronal, and transverse planes. The foot with 33 joints that move in three dimensions, it moves in an infinite amount of patterns. So they're not pure planes. They are actually deviating in, in a whole realm of different uh, dimensions or planes uh, as, as they move. Now each ligament you know, that lets go first or tendon will then have the bones start to tumble or put adverse forces on other, other structures. So that's why we never really see the same foot twice. We may see some similarities, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you each, what, whatever ligament was the weak, ligament, uh, weak, um, weak link, allows the bones to start tumbling and add forces, uh, adverse forces to the other, other uh, structures, like I said. One fourth of all the human bones is actually in the feet. And so we can't just look at this as very simple uh, by just putting a simple device underneath that foot and trying to control it and enable that person to gain, regain as much uh, functionality as possible. We have 107 ligaments within the foot. Now that 107, so you think of which one let's go first and then which one's the second one, third, fourth foot, hard to predict. And so each person, each human has their weak links that they, we have to protect. And so uh, you have to just think of that, that it's just a simple device that doesn't protect these in the long run is actually, I think, poor management in, in lower extremity orthotics. We have 19 muscles and tendons that we also have to consider on this whole, whole uh, process. Now, when there's a disruption of either muscle, nerve, whatever, whatever it is, but once the imbalance starts, a simple device or strengthening on both sides of that does not replace the muscle that was removed. So our job in the long run is that individual has, we have to protect that alignment and structure and also thus function of those, uh, of the foot structures, but all the way up the whole chain, the whole skeleton. So if the foundation is off, the whole building is off, the whole human body. So if we just have one thing starting to collapse, it starts actually deviating the body in so many different ways. And we can talk about that uh, further uh, down the road. The other thing that was, that's amazing is that there's 7,800 nerves in the human foot. That is a tremendous amount of, of nerves and things that we have to consider. There is all kinds of different receptors within the foot and it knows when it's out of alignment. It knows when it's getting too much pressure on one side of the foot or the other and whatever. Our job is to try to get that as balanced as we can. Uh, and it's funny as I'll take people that have very deformed feet and I'll straighten them out to, you know, sometimes uh, completely. Other times they go to a certain point and then they stop, but the more I correct, I don't know how many people that will automatically say, wow, that feels better. The human body wants to be aligned all the way up the whole chain, but especially on the foot, that it really wants to be corrected in all three dimensions, not just uh, one. There are three billion nerves in the whole body, three billion nerves. And then in the foot, we have three arches. And so some of the devices that I see out there are basically flat. Uh, and there's no structural alignment. There's no consideration for alignment in any of the dimensions. They take care of the, the stance phase and that's about it. They put a little bit of dynamic uh, or, or, or pick up the toe. Again, on the definition of orthosis, straightening structural deficits, we have to straighten them out in three dimensional. So the designs have to be a lot more sophisticated than a simple toe pickup device. We need to support the body segments in proper alignment and hold it there so that the other structures are being protected as well. And we, we improve balance and, and uh, alignment. Now replace the functional deficits. Okay, once we take care of the structural, then you go after the functional. You don't go for the functional first and then forget about the structural. And that's what's been happening with a lot of the uh, orthoses that we see today. There's probably about a thousand lower extremity orthotic devices that are just trying to do one functional deficit, but really not taking care of uh, all the, the structural deficits. 
Now the human foot has 26 bones multiplied by three dimensions. And if you look at that, there are 78 different structural deficits that actually have to be solved first. So it'd be like a dentist, if there were 78 cavities in the mouth and they decide, oh, let me just go after the easiest uh, cavity and fix, fix only one cavity. Well, you still have all these other deficits, whether it be in the mouth or in the foot that needs to be solved as well. So we can't just go what's easy. We have to recognize that there are many, many, many more uh, structural deficits that, um, that we need to actually go after and protect and solve. The other is all deformities. You know, we need to not only prevent them, but we need to reduce them. So if we have a deformity that's already started, uh, or, or, or it could be anywhere from mild to severe, we need to put all the corrective forces in there to straighten them out as best we possibly can. Every person tends to go, wow, that feels better. So we need to put corrective forces in, in all three dimensions all the way up the whole chain so that we improve the foundation for that individual. But there are other things that there are many type of um, issues that we see that we know this is what's going to happen down the road if we don't protect it now and we have to understand that. So many of the things are before the deformities even start are all preventable. And so you can't just wait for the deformity to be created and said, oh, uh, now, now I need to try to fix that. I see most lower extremity orthotic devices are accommodative where they're, they're actually they're allowing the deformities to be kept in that one, one position. And uh, what I call accommodative. So no one's even thinking about how to straighten them out in three dimensions. And, and I think that this is something that we as a profession could really approve upon. So the protection of body parts. So a lot of times that we do is protection of body parts is, uh, you know, if there's a broken bone, we support it and protect it and in, in good alignment until uh, that heals. But there's other things that we could do as well as for our protection. So most deformities are acquired and preventable. Yes, there are deformities that are congenital. So congenital uh, deformities are something that we have nothing uh, we can't do anything about prior, but post we can. But most of the deformities that humans have today, you know, the feet and so forth, are acquired. So our goal for uh, recognizing even before the def deformities even start is how do we, what's go what type of deformity will it start? Will it be an external rotary deformity, internal rotary deformity? How is it going to affect the foot? What do we need to protect uh, on that whole whole uh, alignment issues. Uh, the other is as we recognize mild deformities, every deformity will continue to get worse unless we do something to, to stop it. And so by doing nothing is, I think, uh, a shame. We need to actually educate uh, each individual, even our peers, even our, our uh, healthcare professionals, hey, we need to, this is something that we may want to address now, otherwise this is only going to get, get worse. Now, when we prevent deformities, we're also preventing many surgeries that may, uh, may take place in the future. And whenever we do, whenever we do there, a surgery that is taking care of something that actually was soft tissue related at first, may turn into bony structural as we start grinding on, on joints and so forth. But the better alignment we have, all that is is preventable. There's a lot of pain centers, a lot of arthritis that are all preventable if we take care of it in the early phases. Uh, so we have to think of not only what it is now, but what's going to happen in 5, 10, 20 years and how that's going to affect that individual down the road and what pain centers that we might be able to prevent uh, now. And I think that's what uh, the power of a, a uh, very good orthotist is we can save millions and millions and millions of dollars. Um, I, we recently took care of a gentleman where he had over a million and a half dollars worth of surgeries and hospitalizations and infections and so forth. And he was still on the couch in great pain, could not get out of the, uh, off the couch. He had two young children. Uh, he couldn't run around. He couldn't do anything to, to even uh, assist or go play or do anything. With one orthosis, we outperformed what a million and a half dollars worth of 
what I think were preventable um, surgical procedures. So as soon as anything is being cut and altered, there's scar tissues, there's all kinds of complications. Um, it may create other um, issues on arthritis and so forth. So the more that we could prevent, actually, and by better alignment, then the human body may not get these arthritic uh, conditions. And there's some things from trauma that are, uh, I mean, they are going to have arthritis regardless. But um, if we could prevent surgeries that really are not helping, uh, then we're going to save um, the healthcare system a lot of money. So that gentleman with one orthosis was uh, now able to get up, run, be able to uh, go back to work. Uh, he's able to, uh, last summer, did a 15-mile hike above 10,000 feet. Uh, is back enjoying life and active life uh, and so forth. We're able to trace his kids, uh, be participant in, in activities of the family and so forth. So um, just even one good orthodist, one good orthosis could save, I hear that was over a million and a half dollars. Now, if you multiply that by, you know, all the preventable surgeries that are out there, uh, just think of all the healthcare dollars that our profession could, could uh, really save. So protection of body segments. One of the, the things that where it's being used most often is in fracture bracing. So it tends to be more in the acute phase uh, and a fracture brace, we may be able to protect. It could be and you know, the, the fracture bracing could be a spinal, uh, like I'd use for body jackets and so forth. Uh, could be post-surgical and so forth. So our job is to protect and hold while the human body can heal and heal itself. You know, and even halos for broken necks and, and others is a, another example. Most, like I said, are trauma related. But the things that I see that where we're uh, possibly could improve upon is on the chronic conditions. And the chronic conditions are things that uh, a lot of those are preventable on many people. And so I have had uh, patients where they come in and they bring orthoses in from uh, all the past years that they got from a certified clinician. And all it showed was a progression of the deformities getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it was just captured. It was just a, a, a um, accommodative bracing that allowed that deformity to get worse and worse and worse and there was no attempt to even try to straighten it out. And I remember the first uh, orthosis uh, was I think like 18 degrees of a calcaneal uh, uh, varus. And what I was able to do with my hands is I took pictures and I was able to correct it at down to 11 degrees. Well, instead of the orthosis set at 18 degrees, you know, you need to go for as much correction as you can. And so we're able to put it at 11 degrees and over time reduce that 11 degrees with, with continued pressures. So just like teeth, we could actually move with soft tissue, slow pressure, and actually uh, decrease deformities and so forth. So things like that are, there's a lot of chronic conditions that we could um, prevent. Uh, this person was actually at the point where the deformities and the bracing was at so great they developed an ulcer on the side and they were considering amputation. So things like that are just something that as a profession we need to, need to do a better job on trying to prevent that and actually enable that person to have a more active life by not accommodating but actually going for a corrective in three dimensions. Correction in three, triplanar management is much harder. It is more challenging. It is more sophisticated. It is uh, takes more skill and more time to to resolve. And so part of the issue here on the complication of this is managed care. Managed care is only allowing an orthodist to gain so much money for a low extremity orthosis, which is a shame because if they invest and if we do a better job, we could save so many healthcare dollars uh, uh, you know, down the road and uh, by far. I, I don't know how many total joint replacements we're able to save by better alignment and so forth. That's another whole subject, but we will um, delve into that in the future lecture. So the other thing on deformities, what we don't realize is that ligaments and tendons are being destroyed with deformities. Now the other is the more that the skeleton is out of alignment, we take strong muscles and make them weaker. We take weak muscles and make them even weaker. 
So these people need the most efficient muscle line of pull as possible, and that's with triplanar alignment in all three dimensions, all the way up the whole chain, so that the muscle, whatever muscle power they have, can work more efficiently. The other is joint surfaces. This is something that uh, I just see a lot of people have very chronic, painful feet and ankles because of uh, malalignment of a joint in three dimensions and so all of a sudden you get a wear point in one area and then all of a sudden uh, they go to their doctor and they say oh we need to do a joint replacement well actually by better alignment it distributes the pressure over that whole joint surface and all of a sudden their pain is gone and there's no need for surgery at least at this point uh, in their life I don't know how many total joint replacements that we were able to save just by better alignment the other thing is by better alignment we're not getting uh, as, as the joints all line up as they should ligaments get to tighten up as they should or stay tight uh, the support system all the way up the whole chain somebody is able to balance a whole lot better and feel more secure about their situation also the pressures within the orthosis become less uh, if there's no need for certain aspects of the brace they get trimmed away because they're no longer they're being held in the most corrected position. The more involved it is, the more you have to add to the brace in three dimensions to support those malign joints. And what I do is in time is I remodel uh, the foot and ankles, knees, so forth, so that in time the, the body uh, likes to be aligned and back into normal position. I thank you for listening to this uh, first uh, lecture, uh, basically the uh, definition of an orthosis, why it's so important for us to as a profession improve, uh, become better clinicians so that many people in need of bracing uh, have a better, uh, more active, and less cost, uh, costing lifestyle for, their, for the rest of their life. And so uh, if we could prevent many deformities, uh, many surgeries, many pain centers, uh, the quality of their life is gonna be much better throughout their life. And that's something that we definitely have the power to do. So thank you for listening. Thank you.